it's on life support for sure. Uh, and if we're not getting any additional um, benefits for households and replacement of lost wage and salary income, it, it does look like the pace of improvement is certainly going to going to slow. So somewhere in the low to mid single digits for growth rates in, in Q4 seems to be reasonable, which would be a you know pretty significant deceleration off the roughly 25% that, that consensus. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just opened new position at 118.96.5. New position opened at not one, sorry, 1.1796.5. It's a long position on Euro U against United States dollar. Say some useful integrity. Um, I, I agree with the, the need to downplay any signal from the pandemic uh, numbers. Uh, and even the initial claims data is something that, that we're paying less attention to. Continuing claims still seem to have a pretty good signal uh, to them. So the direction seems to be one of more modest improvement. Uh, look, this is just one of those periods where it's, it's a data point that has lost some of its relevance. Over time, it will become more relevant again. So we, we just downweight some of the signal that, that's coming out of it, but we don't ignore it entirely. Michael, you've got your finger on the pulse of the conversation that we had through the summer with pretty much everybody. So many people expected that late summer slowdown. It didn't develop and they capitulated and embraced the idea that what we're seeing is a self-sustaining recovery. Are you saying we're not and what we really need now is more fiscal juice? I, so I think we've been, we, I've tried to be consistent in saying we, we do think another round of, of assistance for households, like a three to four month, maybe five month kind of period uh, would would be critical in terms of providing a greater bridge and underpinning that virtuous cycle, right? It worked coming out of lockdown because households had resources to spend. Personal income in July was about 7% above where it was in February. Wage and salary income was about 5% below where we were in February. Uh, so it was the federal assistance that was key in helping to underpin that initial rehiring and therefore improvement in production. And I do think a little more to bridge us into year end would be useful. It doesn't mean the economy can't continue to recover with that. I'm placing a stop on profit at 117.98.5. heavily dependent on fiscal policy and whether or not we get a vaccine. What happens and we'll if, have to see how those develop. Well, and of course, the president tweeting out here, vaccines coming very shortly, literally matter of weeks. I believe the science community uh, would beg to disagree uh, with that. Michael Gapin, what if we don't get fiscal policy? What does that do in terms of tenths of a percentage point to anybody's GDP guess? I mean, it's probably more than than tenths of a uh, of a percent. Uh, I, I think at least what most forecasters have been penciling in a, a trillion or more in fiscal stimulus. So those are you, they would be bringing down 2021 growth forecasts fairly fairly markedly. Uh, the vaccine obviously would push things in in the other direction. So uh, we we actually put in just a relatively small phase four package. We put it in in, in, in our forecast in March. It was like 750 billion. In, you know, billions are, are not trillions, of course. Um, and so I, I would say we have less adjusting to do on, on that front, but I think you're talking more percentage points, not tenths of a percent, if, if we're not getting, getting phase four spending or something beyond the election for sure. Michael, how worried are you about scarring on the labor market, particularly with younger workers who have some of the highest unemployment rates ever? I would say there, at, the, at the moment, I'd say I, I have mild worry to medium worry. And by that, I mean when, yes, the unemployment rates come down and the level of unemployment has come down. But underneath that, the number of unemployed workers that are being classified as permanently out of work, that number's rising. It's, it's a, it was a little over 4 million in the last employment report. So the bad news is it's rising. 
the reason I wouldn't say I'm extremely concerned is after 0809, that number was over 8 million. So there is some evidence that scarring in labor markets is happening, but on a relative basis at, at present, it's only about half as bad as we saw uh, after 0809, and, and we'll see where that number goes. No vaccine likely means that number is going to get higher. If we do get a vaccine that's widely available sometime around the middle of next year, that should limit the degree of labor market scarring. Michael Gapin, always love catching up with you. Generous Michael, with your time this morning, and we appreciate it. Michael, thank you. Michael Gapin there of Barclays. Got to touch on the price action cross yes. asset worldwide as we count you down to the opening bell. 50 minutes away in New York City with equity futures breaking down overnight, and they stay there as we inch towards the cash open. We're negative 1.5% on the S&P 500, deeper into negative territory on the NASDAQ. If we take a look at foreign exchange, talked about it through the morning, stronger dollar against the bulk of G10, the exception to that rule, the Japanese yen, just reflecting that risk aversion. And in the bond market, actually a sizable bid into the long end of the Treasury curve now, a bull flattener, the long end rallying, yield to lower by six basis points on 30s, down around about five basis points on 10s to 0.65%. That's the market story, Tom. We've got to talk about the politics too. And I know you've been on top of it all morning and over the last 24 hours as well. There is a real debate over the vaccine and when the vaccine will be available and widely distributed. Yeah. And the president has made several comments on that this morning alone. Part of studying microbiology, John, in virology to an extent is you learn very quickly how dumb you are and how gifted these scientists are. And it is, you know, forget about any opinions. It is an outrage how simplistic the debate is as compared to the complexities of the science. This is really, really complex stuff these people are dealing with as a race to try to end this horrific pandemic. And Tom, the other thing we need to think about is just human psychology. How many people will want to go and get this, given the way it's played out before us right now? I, I think Bill Gates touched on this earlier this week with Bloomberg. Yeah, Mr. Gates, with our Bloomberg Green effort, folks, let me make this clear. You know, there's all these billionaires that bloviate about this, that, and the other thing. Gates is hugely qualified to speak on vaccines, on virology, with what he and his family did in Africa. And, John, you know, you can hear the fury in Mr. Gates. I love what Peter Hoteza Baylor says. And excuse my French here. I don't know if it's appropriate for TV or radio, uh -huh. but it's WTF science. I mean, that's what Peter Hoteza Baylor oh. is calling it. Can what does I that say stand that? for, Tom? What the French? I, just tell us what it stands for, you know. What, what is that? W-T? Really? No? Really, John? I'm going to look it up. <clears throat> from John. New York and London. Good morning. I've been trying to get Tom in trouble for years, Lisa. Do you I think I'm going to stop? No, I know you're not going to stop. No, no. Coming up it's on a, the it's open, an air, It's a Michael place you land on an Wells airline. Fargo. It's like, you know, Looking forward DCA to that. or, you What's know. That? WTF. Runway, it's like where you land. You know, it's like, a, it's like in Is Europe it? somewhere. Okay, I'm sure. This is Bloomberg. With the First Word News, I'm Rishka Gupta. President Trump is moving closer to a bipartisan plan for more stimulus spending. The president said he liked the compromise $1.5 trillion proposal from a bipartisan group of House members. He urged Senate Republicans to, quote, go for the higher numbers. There's been a months-long deadlock over another coronavirus relief bill. And British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has made a key concession on his controversial Brexit law-breaking plan. He's agreed to give the House of Commons veto power over whether his government can override parts of the Brexit divorce treaty. Members of his own Conservative Party have threatened to rebel against Johnson. Now, which is harder to solve, the coronavirus pandemic or climate change? Bloomberg's Eric Schatzke put that question to billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates. And you can catch that full conversation at 2 p.m. New York time, plus more throughout the day from the Bloomberg Green Festival. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and on Bloomberg Quick Take, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ritika Gupta. This is Bloomberg.
We never thought COVID-19 is going to hit us. But now, looking back, I don't know how we could cope without uh, this new sector. Hong Kong is not by itself a big market, but because of the uh, growth, uh, uh, TVA, there's huge opportunity. So we're seeing a, a huge wave of biotech innovation coming uh, in the past few, few, few years. Almost uh, uh, kind of certain that uh, at the very beginning of our journey to pursue the biotech uh, uh, list listings, we we'll see a lot of the Chinese companies. This is just uh, the right thing to do at the right time. And uh, it's such a big sector. We have a uh, second product approval and now are actively preparing for the commercialization. And then we're expecting to have two more products uh, to be approval before end of the year. Uh, so we, we have a high confidence that we will meet the expectation. Give you a sense of the real-time action, the 10-year yield tumbling now 11 basis points, so continuing in this knee-jerk risk-off field. direct-to-consumer is is really been the key um, takeaway here whether they go direct to consumer online or with their own stores it's important that brands control their future now Robert Burke there the Robert Burke Associates chairman and CEO as we look at equity futures down 51 on the S&P 500 we are negative 1.5 percent in just a moment Tom's going to go and find a new purse before we uh, do that Tom in about 10 minutes time I'll catch up with Troy Gayeski of Skybridge Capital. You enjoy yourself. I know you're excited about this. Oh, I am. It's a great, great person for a great, great New York City. Troy Gasky will be wonderful, and these markets are certainly on the move today. As we talked to Robert Burke earlier in New York Fashion Week and what it means for our audience of Global Wall Street, you can go back to a girl who showed up, I mean, literally showed up in New York and said, hello, I'm here, when she was 18 years old. She stopped traffic years ago with a T-shirt on The Tonight Show, and that launched Rebecca Minkoff off to purses and the rest. She joins us now on the state of her collapsing fashion industry. Rebecca Minkoff, wonderful to have you with us. How are you going to make it to the other side? You've been resilient more than anybody I know. How do you get to 2022? I think we get that, uh, we get there by being resilient, by being innovative, and you know you really get to go back and flex your entrepreneurial skills. This is the test for any entrepreneur: can you do it? You cannot rest on your laurels right now. And my co-founder and I have done nothing short of a miracle by keeping our company together. I can't imagine when you first walked into Robert Burke's Bergdorf Goodman and saw your product on the second floor or the fifth floor or whatever. In two or three years, are people like you going to have product in department stores or are they done? You know, we're not done. Um, obviously, the pandemic has changed everything and overnight, 70% of our business was shut down due, the t due to the pandemic. But we're seeing a resurgence. These stores are coming back. It's going to be slower. It's going to be different. The relationship will certainly change, but um, we're getting requests for orders that currently we can't fill from these stores. Where are these stores? Are they in big cities or is the location changing? You know, we've had requests from our past uh, stores, whether it's the Nordstrom's opening back up or, you know, the slow sort of as these cities get allowances, um, they are in the bigger cities. And I don't know that you'll see a huge resurgence with department stores in smaller cities. But we are seeing that specialty stores that are allowed to reopen are also requesting product. And because of that, we're actually able to bring back certain staff that were wholesale related only because we can't uh, service these clients as well as we need. And so we're bringing back staff we had furloughed in order to service those clients. Rebecca, how do you compete with sweatpants in an era of working from home? 
Here's the beautiful thing. We have a really popular Janine sweatshirt that we've had for several months that we cannot keep in stock. It has the perfect Zoom shoulder. And now we're getting her you in a sweatsuit coming this holiday season. You're going to get her in velour. You get her in a hoodie. You get her in a dress. So we are listening to our customer and we're giving her fashion, but a very, very comfortable way. Uh, Rebecca, I want you to talk about how you got to branch out. You've done a great job of that. I mean, it was one story a person. You've gone so far beyond that. I mean, Lisa Abramowitz needs little Minkoff. There's no question <laughs> about that. But, you know, the, the creative survival, where is all that product discrimination going? What's your vision of how you're going to parse brands over the next 24 months? So I think that we're seeing, and it needed to happen, a complete fashion reset. I think we were all on a hamster wheel. We were designing too much product. Yeah. We were clogged with inventory. So one of the things we did with launching Little Minkoff is partner with a platform called Resonance. It's inventoryless, 95% biodegradable, and made with earth-friendly chemicals. And there's almost zero waste because they literally print the pattern on the fabric and cut around it. And we're expanding that to women's because we see that a woman is actually becoming more conscious about waste, about fast fashion, and it's um, harm to the environment and workers. And so we're embracing that and fully utilizing everything we can to grow that segment. Um, it's called RM Green, but with an E after our store on Green Street. And so that launches in the next few weeks, um, in addition to the Little Mink Off, which is already there. Rebecca, as an entrepreneur and as a mentor to a lot of entrepreneurs, is Amazon the enemy? You know, today, uh, you know, there is a big divide, many divides, actually. But I think that right now we're selling on Amazon when I, our entire business, you know, uh, with the exception of our own site, went offline. We needed to be able to find partners that were nimble and quick and would work with us. And so we've had an incredible partnership. And I think as long as you can set those rules and they are followed, then they're a fantastic place to be. Uh, Rebecca, I look at the tax structure that you have to deal with. You've got politicians looking for the rich people buying fancy Rebecca Minkoff stuff to crush them in New Jersey and other states as well. What kind of support do you need from fiscally beleaguered politicians? I think they need to turn their fight elsewhere. They should probably worry more about equality. They should probably worry more about, you know, making sure that people who are not with jobs and who need more financial help get that support. You know, we elect these politicians and they should be worrying about the people that need help the most versus, you know, crushing businesses that are trying to survive and really contribute to the economy. <clears throat> Very good. Rebecca Minkoff, too short a visit. Congratulations on uh, getting through 2021 with the Elan that you've shown it for years. Rebecca Minkoff, and of course, uh, one of the lines there is Little Minkoff for ages 4 through 12. It's a perfect accompaniment, Lisa Abramowitz, to... Uh, yeah, to the, what? The autumnal season. The <laughs> autumnal season. You know, the season autumnal well. season is the political season. And really, I think the focus really shifts to Washington, but also to the state legislatures, with New Jersey just coming out. Uh, Phil Murphy, Murphy uh, talking mm. about raising taxes on millionaires. We heard that from Scott Stringer uh, speaking yeah. with you and, <clears throat> and, and Shanali Basak. And there's this question of how you rebuild states and cities with money that you don't have while also not chasing people away from said cities. This is the dilemma, and we heard yesterday from Kathy Hochul, they don't want this to be well, a high-tax state. And yet, you know, what's the other option? What's the other option? Is the, the, the option always in every case, Lisa, whether it's Bloomberg 1130 in New York or 1061 in Boston, down in Washington, and worldwide, nationwide, rather, on Sirius XM on radio, it's all the same which is you have to grow your way out. That is always, in every case, uh, the solution, as frankly we see uh, in Europe. The New, Jer New Jersey governor, of course, uh, chiming in with others with massive fiscal uh, issues. Lisa, the markets this morning, futures negative 53, but the bond deterioration, to uh, Lisa, to me, is tangible, and the surprise on this Thursday morning is a two-year yield comes in to 0 0.1250. Lisa, yeah. what do you see? Well, I'm watching the 10-year and the 30-year also coming in. I absolute repudiation of what Fed Chair Powell was saying yesterday, which is they'll do whatever it takes to get inflation. The market is saying, you're not getting inflation. Long-term yeah. yields are going to be low. And this really highlights this fear. What more can be done without fiscal support 
And what more can Washington do with such a heated political season right And now? I would suggest the backdrop is the president this morning. I know, I mean, uh, Mr. Cudlow on Fox Biz, but I believe the president was out on Fox Sports as well with a wide set of tweets which are getting out there now on the vaccine on North Korea as well, but also uh, previous tweets earlier this morning on his belief in what we'll see on the election. What you need to know in the markets right now, futures deteriorate on Bloomberg Radio, on Bloomberg Television. More coverage of these challenges. Futures, negative 60. Good morning. This is Bloomberg. The Census Bureau has asked Congress for a 120 extension. I don't know that you even have to ask, and I think 120 days isn't nearly enough. I'm moving up my stop and profit to 11801.5. Okay. Yep, that's moved. 11801.5. A reminder, isn't it, just how sensitive the markets are to any commentary about trade. We did see some pressure on the yuan, we did see some pressure on the futures. That is now being reversed.
Position closed on British pound, oh, sorry, on Euro at 118.01.5. We have a profit, 500 pounds.